Um, this morning, we're going to continue in on our series, The Holy Spirit in You, as we've I've entitled it. Um, we're in the second part of, of uh, this series. Uh, we did an in-depth study in the Holy Spirit for, what, eight weeks, I believe it was, eight messages. And then um, a few weeks ago, uh, the calendar turned over to May, and uh, I began to focus in on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, what it is, uh, who gives it, and who is it for. We talked about all those things. Um, and last week, uh, we discussed the reasons why would we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, what are the purposes of having that occur in our lives? There's, there's probably some good things. If God gives it, guess what? It's good, Amen. right? Amen? And so we talked about last week, the primary one is power. Power that gives us uh, the personal boldness to accomplish Christ's purposes for our lives with authority and with confidence. Aren't you glad we can have authority and confidence in Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit? Praise God. But there are other benefits to uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit that were, were mentioned as well. And uh, uh, it, the fact that it gives us an increased awareness of God, an ability to comprehend his purposes, right? It's really not our purposes in the end, it's his purposes. And an increased desire to pray and to grow in God's word and to fellowship with one another. Those are all good things and they all help us grow in the Lord, don't they? Amen. Praise God, hallelujah. So if you'll stand and turn in honor of God's word to Matthew chapter 8, we'll arrive there shortly. I won't make you stand too long. We don't want anybody else fainting out on me here. Uh, but, but another benefit and outcome of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that it empowers us to actively use the gifts of the Spirit. And last week, we touched on, the, uh, on two of the nine spiritual gifts uh, recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the first one, of course, we talked about was the, the message of wisdom. Uh, which is, we, we explained, was an utterance from the Holy Spirit that applies God's word or wisdom to a specific situation. How many know we need that sometimes in our lives? We get going through things and then we don't have the answers. We need the Lord, right? We need his wisdom. The, the other gift I discussed was the message, or it's kind of known as a word of knowledge or message of knowledge, as we often say, a word of knowledge. But uh, it is, that is an utterance from the Holy Spirit, which reveals to us about people, circumstances or biblical truths and so most of these gifts can be used corporately of course here at the church or individually on your own God can use those things obviously in your own individual life so we're gonna go to Matthew uh, chapter 8 and we're gonna start with uh, verse 5 and uh, and so let's let's uh, read that and um, and you know what I guess I needed to go there first and I don't have it that ready so let me just get there Amen. that would help yeah, usually I'm there, but that's okay. Praise the Lord. God's not into perfection, right? Amen. Amen. Here we go. So starting with verse uh, 5. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centur centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he, do and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for we thank you that, God, you pour out your spiritual gifts on us, Father God, and Lord, I just pray that uh, as people, as your people, that as spirit-filled people, we would function in those gifts, Lord Jesus. We would not uh, hide them under a bushel, if you will, but Lord, we'll let those gifts come forth, and you will begin to show us more and more clearly what gifts there are we to use corporately, and what gifts are you going to use? That maybe we're not, they're lying dormant. So God, give us wisdom in that, and Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, because that empowers us to, to do and to, to carry out those gifts. And so, Father, we thank you for the many, many gifts you give us, the, and of course, the greatest gift, salvation. But Lord, there's many things after that, Lord, and we're thankful for that. And so, Lord, take this word uh, of these, uh, these lips that are just made basically of clay, and Lord, anoint them and, and just speak to people today through, through this word, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name, and all God's children said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Tell someone, hey, you want to use the gifts of the Spirit, <laughs> and you are gifted by the Spirit, amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. Well, hey, that brings us to the third gift we're going to talk about. 
and uh, that the Lord wants us to use us in and through us, and, uh, and that, of course, is faith, okay? Which is supernatural, and it's imparted to us by the Holy Spirit to believe God for the miraculous. And we see examples of people walking by faith throughout the New Testament. The woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9. Later in that same chapter, the two blind men who had faith to be healed. Six chapters later, we read about the Canaanite woman who came to Jesus and to help for her daughter who was suffering from de uh, demon possession. After their conversation, Jesus told her, woman, you have great faith. We see faith being played out and becoming a reality uh, soon after uh, Peter and John are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I'm going to read from Acts chapter 3, starting with verse 1, okay? Here we go. It states this. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At 3 in the afternoon, now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Amen. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Mm. How many of you know that took some faith? That took some faith. It could, what if it did? What if it doesn't happen? What, what, if, what if, what if, what if, right? All those what ifs. No, they just walked out by faith and said, no, we know our God's a healing God, and I believe this is the time you're going to be healed. And boom, he prayed for him. They prayed for him. So, so God honored their faith, and the man was instantly healed. Hallelujah. In our opening verses, though, I read about the centurion. And Jesus was somewhat impressed by his understanding and his use of power and authority. But what impressed Jesus the most was this Roman warrior's faith. He had faith to believe. I don't know about you, but I want to impress Jesus with my faith. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to do that. Hopefully I can get a witness out there. Hopefully somebody else wants to impress Jesus with their faith. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit enables us to move in these gifts and it only gets enhanced as we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right, let's move on to the fourth uh, spiritual gift, and that is the gift of healing. Simply put, it is the restoration of someone to physical health by divinely supernatural means. Okay, it's not something we can do ourselves. I, I can't lay hands on somebody and they get healed because of Ken or because of whoever else in this church prays. If that's what we think it is, it's not going to happen and it's going to go south fast, okay? It's not by our power, not by our might. It's by the Spirit of the Lord, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, and so there are numerous examples <clears throat> of this throughout the Gospels of uh, in, in Jesus bringing healing to those he prayed for to receive it. His long, drawn-out prayers like, Be clean! go or Jesus just touching him right of course I'm joking right Jesus didn't recite the Apostles Creed and he didn't say you need to know the four spiritual laws to get you know to get healed here or he didn't ask him on a scale of one to ten what's your pain level okay and I'm not necessarily against that but but he didn't do all those things okay he just said go and he said be healed and guess what they went and they were healed amen hallelujah yeah, praise God so, of course, Jesus obviously is, is the healer, of course. So, um, and, and those things, that, that, that thing I just said is not necessarily wrong, but, but uh, Jesus just, he, he just obviously had that authority, but we have that authority in him too, don't we? Amen. Yeah, but pastor, that was Jesus, and, and he's God in the flesh. True, but what's your point? The spirit of who, him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living in you. Right? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Come on. I didn't write the scripture verse. You'll find it. Go in your Google smart. They'll tell you where it is. Hallelujah. Normally I do. But. And didn't Jesus say we would do greater things than he did? It didn't stop with Jesus, but healings continue on throughout the early New Testament church in Acts. I see it everywhere. From what we just read in Acts 3, where Peter prayed for the lame man, right, to be healed, and he was healed, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. And all the way through to Acts 28, where we see 
Paul lays hands and prays for Publius, Publius, it's hard to say that name, father, and he is miraculously healed. Publius, maybe. I don't know how you say that. But anyway, you get the point. It's in Acts chapter 28. And healing still occur, occurs today in 2021. It does. I don't care what some denominations say. I don't care what some people say. Healing occurs today in 2021. It's one of the spiritual gifts God has given through his Holy Spirit. And we talked about it last week. God doesn't give gifts to some and not others. As a parent, who would you give gifts to and then take it from others? What in the world is that kind of God is that? It's not the God I serve. I don't know about you, but it's not the God I serve. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's move on to the fifth gift. And it's similar to the, the healing, uh, but it's a bit broader, I'd, I guess you could say. And uh, it's also, of course, mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, and that the Holy Spirit enables to occur, and that is miraculous powers. Miraculous powers, which is this. It's divine supernatural power to alter the course of nature, including driving out demons. We read about, and I'm going to give you this a sheet on this when we leave. You guys will have this all on a sheet with these different gifts and what they basically are. And uh, or Lydia will be at the door, so when you go, we'll, 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 we'll do that. But, but anyway, we read about Jesus showing power over nature as he walked the earth, right. didn't he? He calmed the storm. He walked on water. He fed the 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. He fed the 4,000 people with seven loaves and a few small fish. Speaking of fish, didn't Jesus pay his taxes with a coin found in one? And the disciples on two different occasions caught literally boatloads of fish after they could catch no fish all night, right? Because Jesus told them to. We see that in Luke 5 when he was calling the disciples. We see that in John 21 after he was appearing to the disciples after the resurrection. He appeared to them 40 times. And both those times they caught a lot of fish. But master, we haven't caught anything. We've been out here all night. But wait a minute, you're talking to the king of kings and the Lord of lords who created the fish and who created the sea and who created everything else in it. What's impossible for him? Nothing. Come on. The fig tree withered after Jesus cursed it. It didn't stop there, however. In Acts 28, we read about Paul being bit by a, a viper on the island of Malta. He shakes the snake off into the fire and suffers no ill effects. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't forget, though, not only that, there was, the, there was the prison breaks. Remember? Acts 16, Paul and Silas get put into prison. And, of course, they're moaning and groaning about how they were witnessing. And they get, no, at 12 o'clock, midnight, they're worshiping God. How great is our God. They're in there singing away in the prison. I don't know, would we be doing that? Would I be doing that? I got to ask myself that, right? Or would I be moaning and groaning, oh, gosh, I can't believe I'm doing the Lord's work. And I'm here stuck in prison. Oh, it's me. No, they're not doing that at all. Short story is, not only are they singing, but then an earthquake happens, right? The foundations of the prison are shaken. The prison doors fly open, and their chains come off. Maybe that has something to do with praise. In the midst of your trials. I don't know, that just came to me. Maybe that has something to do with praise in the midst of your trials, right? Oh, yeah, then there's Acts chapter 12. Peter is put in prison, an angel appears, and light shines all around him, right? And his chains fall off, and the angel says, hey, follow me. He follows him right out the prison doors. The last I checked, there's still angels out there in 2021. The last I checked. Okay, PK, but that's Jesus and, and Paul, and, and, but these natural wonders don't happen today. Oh, oh Really? I've heard numerous testimonies where people prayed during a drought and it rained on, the, on their farm only. Or other people that prayed, rain would not fall on their graduation party or their special occasion and the rain just kind of went right around. Is our God able? I think he is. Do, but do we believe? Do we believe in miracles? Do we believe in the miraculous? If not, why not? The Holy Spirit is within us as believers and does powerful work through us, especially as we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus cast out demons from the, the two men of Gadara in Matthew chapter 8. A chapter later, he cast out the devil from the dumb man in chapter 9. Three chapters later, he cast out a demon from the blind and dumb man. 
and he's delivered from the demon, this guy, and he was instantly healed. Five chapters later, Jesus casts out the devil from a boy. In Mark, we see Jesus casting out the demon from a possessed man at the synagogue. The casting out of demons didn't stop there, however. In Acts chapter 16, Paul is being followed by a slave girl who had a demonic spirit, spirit and was continually harassing him. He commanded the spirit to come out of her in the name of who? Jesus Christ, and it did. Imagine that. See, the casting out of demons still happens today in 2021. We also read how Jesus raised the dead to life. Jairus' daughter, for one, the widow's son at Nain. How about Lazarus, right? But it didn't stop with him. In Acts chapter 9, we read about a disciple named Tabitha, right? Peter was in Lydda near Joppa, and the disciples, they sent for him to come on over. Well, he goes to the room where she lays, basically, well, lays dead, and he asks everyone to leave the room. He prays for Tabitha to get up. She opens her eyes, and she sat up. Sometimes we just got to get the unbelief out of the room. Sometimes we got to get the unbelief out of our heart and just believe God for what, what his word says and who he is. Amen? Hallelujah. Lord, move on our unbelief. Lord, take it away, God. We want to experience the miraculous in 2021. If the world ever needed the miraculous today, it, now it needs it today. It need, they, need a, they need to see the manifestation of God on the earth today because they think church is just church, a bunch of crusty people that are just old and you know, stingy and stuck up. And No, we're the most loving. We ought to be the most loving. We ought to be the most free. We ought to be the most peaceful. Ought to be the most joyful. Ought to be the, the greatest people on the earth because we have Jesus in our hearts. Hallelujah. They ought to be, what in the world do they have over there? Those people are walking around with one smile for hitting one ear, knocking the other ear, and not going back and forth. What do those guys got? Got Jesus, got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength and our strength. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 20, Paul gets long-winded in his preaching, and Eutychus falls asleep, and <laughs> he proceeds to fall out of a third-story window and is picked up dead. Has every, anyone ever fallen asleep during somebody preaching? Don't raise your hand, please. <laughs> Don't raise your hand. Because the guy got, the preacher got long-winded, and he just kept going on and on and on. He was closing for five times. He kept saying he was coming for a close, but he never landed. One of those kind of pre messages, you know. Hallelujah. So he falls out, and Paul goes down, and he puts his body around him, and, and Eutychus was raised up and alive. Whew. And in our lifetime, this same thing of people being raised from the dead is happening in Africa. I'm sure you can attest to that, Wilford. In other parts of the world, nothing is impossible with God. But why can't it happen in America? It can happen in America. Why? He doesn't, he loves us, okay? We just got to believe for the miraculous. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what my Bible states. And so the question is, do we believe or we, are we just worried about maybe what somebody might think of us if we start believing for some pretty radical, wild things? Amen. Are we concerned about how it looks and what people will say? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what people say. That rhymes, by the way. Oh, there's another one. Okay, it doesn't matter what people say because all we have to answer to is Jesus. And so really, let's put all that stuff aside and let's see people come to Jesus in, these, in this last hours, these last hours and days. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and be baptized in the Holy Spirit and see what my God can do through you. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, moving on to the uh, sixth spiritual gift that the Holy Spirit enables us and believers to do, and that is prophecy, which is a special temporary ability to bring a word, comma, warning, comma, encouragement, comma, or revelation from under the Holy Spirit's direction. Okay? Of course, we see prophecy all throughout scriptures, old and new. For that matter, let's go a step further and read what 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 states. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, mm -mm, not in the man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 
you notice something here? It's not a, at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's always about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's what enables us. That's what empowers us. Yes, we can do these things, but it's, it's Christ through us. Hallelujah. In other words, this whole book is inspired and directly given from God through the Holy Spirit as, as he led people to write down these, these words. But in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 1, Paul tells us to follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Two verses later, he tells us why. Because men who prophesy speak encouragement, they speak comfort, and they, they, speak, or they strengthen others, okay? They help strengthen others, okay? God is still using prophets today to prophesy through the power of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad all this didn't die with the apostles? Amen. I mean, I felt his presence. We were worshiping today. God was in, he's in this place now. He was in this place earlier. He's in this, and he's, and here, frankly, he's wherever you go, he's with you. He's with you. The Holy Spirit is there in your car. You could be waking up and you had the worst dreams. You fell out of your bed four times and you're waking up, you're drowsy, you can't even think. The Holy Spirit, he's still with you. Okay? No matter what goes on in your life, no matter what happens, trials, tribulations. In fact, I'd dare to say he's come, you, you sense him closer when you're going through trials and tribulations because that's when God just seems to show up. When we reach out because we're at our end, that's when God begins. Amen. When we're at our end, that's when God really shows up, doesn't he? I know he's done that in my life. In the hardest times, boy, did he ever show up in my life. He carried me through. Sometimes I was down here. And I was about to, I didn't know if I was going to make it another day, but that's when the Holy Spirit and God lifted me up. Some of the greatest times of my life when he lifted me up and showed himself were when I was down just about out. But he doesn't let us get down and out, right? He doesn't take us out for the count. He just sometimes he'll get us to that place to get our attention and grow us in certain ways, but God is always there and his Holy Spirit's there carrying us through everything we go through. Amen. Remember, though, it is the Holy Spirit who gives these gifts and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and empowers and enables us to walk in and out of those gifts with confidence right. and with authority, right. right, that God has given each one of us. Do you remember in the scriptures, oh, you see the gospels, and they were amazed by his authority. Yeah. They were amazed by Jesus' authority. Yeah, because it was like, okay, this guy is different than other men. He's not the same as other men. What's the deal with this guy? He seems to speak with confidence and authority. I mean, even at age 12, I'm sure, when he was in the temple, right? When the parents left him and, you know, they forgot him, kind of like my parents because we had a lot of kids, they forget us. No, I'm kidding. They didn't. But anyway, they, they forget him in the temple and he, they're like, who is this guy? He's 12 years old, but he's got a lot of wisdom and he's got a lot of stuff going on here. But see, you can walk in that same authority and that same confidence because you have the Holy Spirit in you and you get a lot of wisdom when you come to Jesus. My eyes were open after I came to the Lord. I could see things totally different after I came to Jesus. Before that, I was darkened. There was like this veil. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Kind of this veil. When I came to Jesus, holy mackerel. I didn't even know I came to Jesus until about a half hour later. I go, what was that feeling like, this lightness coming over me after I listened to that rock song and got saved in the car? And, and, and a half hour later, I'm like, oh, I get it. See, my spiritual eyes were getting opened already. It's like, I'm forgiven. All of a sudden, it dawned on me, I'm truly forgiven. But see, I couldn't, in my carnal flesh, I couldn't even, even then, after I got saved, I couldn't even, at first time, didn't even get it. But God, his Holy Spirit, will teach us as we stay in his word, as we pray, as we fellowship, as we worship him, he'll, he'll speak to us and show us many things. All right, moving right along to the seventh spiritual gift, and that is distinguishing between spirits, Okay. And uh, which is a special ability to judge whether prophecies and utterances are from the Holy Spirit, right? When I say utterance here, I'm referring to words or messages or wisdom, uh, knowledge that are given like in a public setting, like for example here, okay? So we don't want people just saying, hey, uh, you're going to eat 68 hot dogs today and you're going to feel great. Okay, that's not really scriptural and that's really not of God, okay? So if it's something way out there, we want to make sure it it's lines up with God's word. And if you ate 68 hot dogs, you're, you know, well, anyway, we'll, we'll pray for you for healing, okay? You'll get up in the corner bar on the wall there down there in Rockford. Okay, so praise God. So we see uh, these gifts being used numerous times in Acts through Peter, Paul, not Mary. No, sorry. I just Every time I hear Peter and Paul, I think of Mary. Anyway, it's an old group for some of you young people. They don't know it's an old group. But anyway, so, for, so God's using numerous times through Peter and Paul. It is for the protection of the church so that they, we're not led astray, right, by people with ulterior motives. Has there ever been anyone with ulterior motives that have walked through the church doors? Never, right? 
pastor, pastor, you know, the first time they get there, I got to go up, I got to do this, I got to do that. And I, okay, well, let's just, you know, we got to be sensitive to that, right? Because we can't just let people, I mean, we want them to be speaking under the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's, that's great, but we also don't want people, them leading people astray, okay? So it's got to be in the Lord and in, in line up with his word. And so in Acts chapter, chapter 8, we read about Simon the sorcerer who amazed the people in Samaria and had a big following due to his magic. You know, sometimes people like to get a following due to something they're doing. And, and pe- we like, let's be honest, we like followings. As humans, we in our flesh, we like followings, don't we? We like people to follow us, don't we? But Philip was in the area, and uh, people started getting saved and baptized. And then Simon himself gets saved and baptized. And when Peter and John arrived there, they began uh, praying for people to receive the Holy Spirit. And they did. Here we see that second work, that infilling of the Holy Spirit, and the Christians that were already, these Christians, I should say, were already baptized in water. They were already Christians. They already, the Holy Spirit had come in, but now they're getting a second infilling, okay? So we read in Acts 8, uh, starting with verse 18. We're going to start there, and here we go. <clears throat> when Simon saw the Spirit was given uh, at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. How many know right away that doesn't sound good? Give me money so I can have the gift of the Spirit, right? Peter answered, may your, or he'll give money, I should say. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Mm, Wow. So in this case, God uses this gift of distinguishing between spirits, or for short, you could say discernment. The King James says discerning of spirits. uh, Through Peter to convict Simon of his sin, and thankfully, his heart is repentive. See, and that's why we do that. We want people's hearts to be right before God. Ultimately, we're not trying to rebuke people. We're trying to keep them in line with God's word because we love them. We don't want them to get out of, the, out of, the, out of line and out of God's word and out of, out of his ways. And so, but it, I, just a side note here, I always found it interesting that Peter does not use, does not say, uh, identify his sin as greed. He just says that his heart is not right and that he is full of bitterness and captive to sin. Paul also operates in this gift in Acts chapter 13. Paul and Barnabas are uh, in Pepos, Pepos and uh, on the island of Cyprus, and the proconsul, which was a civilian governor, uh, sends for them because he wants to hear the word of God. How many like to go where they, somebody wants to hear the word of God? Isn't that a great place? Because you know, man, God's going to do some things here. Sometimes it might be in Wendy's when you're sitting there talking, and there's other people that just hang and they don't leave. They're hanging out at the next table, and they're just listening to everything you say. That was, that was a God-ordained appointment for you to just, they wanted, God wanted them to hear a lot of things, okay? There's many different ways that can happen, okay? But there, so he, he's wanting to hear more about God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, opposes them and tries to turn the proconsul, whose name was Sergius, from the faith. So let's read it from verse 9 in chapter 13. It says this, Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. Ooh, I don't think I want that on my resume. Thank you very much. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, and then you will be able un- to, un- to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he, and he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. See, and the, the key here is there's a verse back there that said that doing the right ways of the Lord, we want to do things in the right way of the Lord, don't we? Because when we don't do th- things in the right way of the Lord, things have a tendency to go to the, you know, way over the right, the left, wherever, and they don't stay focused or into the word of God. 
okay? That doesn't mean that God is not spontaneous. That doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit doesn't move in ways that we don't understand or know. Sometimes we're doing, he's doing things, we're like, what? I don't have any, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any exa- or, you know, past history of that. What, what, what is that? It doesn't mean that God can't do that. He moves in powerful ways, okay? So we can't put God in a box, but we also can't just go, just doing anything and saying anything without making sure that we're lining up with God's word. Does that make sense? We want to keep, you know, it's always the key is we want to stay in balance. Because we know that wisdom avoids all extremes, it says in Ecclesiastes, doesn't it? So we want to avoid those extremes. So that's, that's the bottom line. So, but here you see God using this discerning spirit through Saul to rebuke Elimaeus, who was trying to turn someone from believing or becoming a believer. Folks, don't do that. <laughs> don't ever do that, right? That's the last thing you want to do is, is discourage someone from, uh, you know, somebody's from coming, becoming a believer. We want to do the opposite, obviously. But... But the proconsul, pro uh, in, in, in this case, it was the proconsul. But another thing I'm noticing in these past two examples I've given from Acts is this. Peter and Paul are walking in, a po- in power. Yeah. They're walking in authority. Yeah. They're walking in boldness when they confront these deceptive spirits. Because who's greater? Christ is greater in us, right, than, than, than what's in them, right? So we don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious. No, we take authority in Jesus' name, don't we? So it's no different in the example I gave earlier in Acts 16 when Paul cast out the demon of the spirit of the, in the slave girl who continued to follow him and pester him. We have boldness. We have authority in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Use it. Hallelujah. Well, that brings us full circle. Because the eighth spiritual gift is speaking in other tongues. And it basically means this. Expressing oneself under the direct influence of the Holy Spirit in a language a person doesn't, or excuse me, hasn't learned or doesn't know. Let me say that again. So it's expressing oneself under the direct influence of the Holy Spirit in a language a person has not learned or does not know. Okay? All right. So... Speaking in other tongues may be in an existing uh, spoken language, as we read about in Acts chapter 2, right? Verses 4 through 6 on the day of Pentecost, right? So the Holy Spirit's poured out on that day. They were God-fearing Jews there from every nation under heaven. We were t- it came up in Sunday school. I don't think it was quinky dink, as I say, coincidence, that there was Jews from every nation under heaven that were there that day. And when they heard this sound, the Bible tells us that a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. You know, when the Holy Spirit is really moving, people will be in bewilderment because it's a little bit different. It's a lot different a lot of times than what goes on in everyday life. They're like, this is different. I've never heard, seen anything like this, right? But that scripture we just read is an example of heaven when it says with Jews from every nation under heaven. And guess what, folks? There's going to be people from every nation every tribe, every tongue, every people group under heaven. How cool is that? Africa, India, Asia, Middle East, Europe, America, Grand Rapids, even Rockford. Okay, sorry. Everywhere. All right, there's going to be somebody from everywhere. That's so cool. Speaking in tongues involves both our spirit and the spirit of God, okay? They work together as one, as we as believers are able to directly communicate with God. Praying in agreement with God's purposes and God's desires, okay? Think of it this way. Somebody who speaks in tongues is speaking directly to God in prayer. It could be praise, worship, and thanksgiving on a spiritual level rather than an intellectual level. We could be praying for ourselves and for others under the influence of the Holy Spirit in a way that goes beyond our human understanding. Isn't that cool? Because we kind of, let me just say this, we have limited understanding compared to God. I think this is what trips so many people up and, and even denominations from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that, is that they want to try to figure it out here. And they don't just open up here and say, God, I just want all that you have. Amen. I just want everything you have, Lord. They want to understand it. We're not going to understand it. It's a work of the Spirit, and we have to accept that and just receive it from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, is the only time we see speaking in other tongues occur 
excuse me, I, I messed this up. But anyways, it's not the only time. There we go. We see speaking in other tongues occur in the early New Testament church. We see it happen uh, in, in Acts chapter 10 with Cornelius and his house, right? The Gentile house. So now we know that Jews from every nation were there, but now we got Gentiles. So guess what? Not just for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles. It's for red, yellow, black, white, rich, poor. On and on it goes. Whoever you are, whoever wants it, right? Praise God. And then in Ephesians, uh, Acts, uh, Acts chapter 19, or Ephesians, uh, uh, the Acts 19, but it was the Ephesian church uh, was also, uh, it was poured out on the believers there as well. So praise God. All right, so let's move on to the last uh, of the nine spiritual gifts that we see that mentioned in, once again in 1 Corinthians 12. I'd, I encourage you to read those verses when you go home today. Uh, it's, they're awesome, and it just obviously talks about the power of our Holy Spirit. So, but that Holy Spirit actively enables us what to do is, to, is directly related to speaking in tongues, and that is the interpretation of tongues, right? It is the Holy Spirit giving in us an ability to understand and communicate the meaning of a message that is spoken in tongues. So somebody speaks out a message, you get, a, you, get the, you get the meaning for it, and you speak that meaning forth in English so everybody understands. That's really what that's saying. So when this occurs in a congregation, it can inspire us to experience deeper worship and prayer, or like when a prophecy is given, it can be used in a way to encourage and build up the whole congregation. Yeah. All right, I need to bring this message to a close. But before I do, uh, let me say this. Uh, these nine spiritual gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12 is not necessarily an exhaustive list. It, um, it, it doesn't include every God-given gift or ability that a believer may possess, okay? So, but these are a good framework to say, okay, God, what is it that you, uh, what is it that the gifts that you, you want to work and use through me? What are those gifts? And I want to I be obedient to walk out those gifts that you've given me. And so, but my reason for bringing these gifts up uh, last week and this week is to further explain the benefits of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Spirit. It's because it further enables us and empowers us to walk out the gifts of God. Aren't you thankful for that? God has given us many gifts and it gives us that ability to, to continue to walk those out. And so we're going to get into more about speaking the tongues. And when I get back the next couple of weeks or the two weeks after that, we're going to finish up this, the whole series and, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, how it relates to being baptized in the Holy Spirit, all those things in future messages. So, um, and then, like I said, we have two more messages in that. But let me just say this as I, as I bring it to a close. Um, don't seek the gift. Seek the giver. Seek God. God, I want all that you had. That's all I did two weeks later in the car. Like I got saved in the car. I told you that many times. But two weeks later in the car, and I told Sunday school today, it came up and I said, yeah, Clyde Park and 28th, that's where the Holy Ghost is. That's where I think I got filled with, in the Holy Spirit. And so you go down there, you, no, I'm kidding. But it can be anywhere, folks, anytime. It doesn't have to be. But these altars are always open. You're welcome to come. We'll pray for you. If you don't want prayer, just come up and seek God for, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And maybe you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Seek God for more of his presence, more of his power. Don't you want more of his spirit? I know I do. I want to walk in his spirit, especially in these days we mean more of him. And so, so I'm going to leave it at that. And again, these altars are open. If you want to come down here, come on down. And again, let me remind you that Lydia will, at the door will have those uh, sheets that I printed out. It's just, it's, it explains these, uh, these spiritual gifts, these nine spiritual gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I would just encourage you to go home and this week and just pray. And uh, God, what, what, what have you put in me? What is it that, how do you want to use me that maybe I'm not being used right now? What is that, Lord? What does that look like? And so I want you to go home and do that. And uh, that's your homework for this week, okay? When I'm, we're gone. And uh, enjoy the week. And uh, of course, Judy and I won't see you till uh, the following Wednesday, week from Wednesday. So we got some great people filling in. And the Holy Spirit won't be leaving here. It'll be right here, all right? Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this, uh, the word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that, Lord, you would just fill us more and more with your presence, more and more with your power. Give us a hunger. Give us a thirst. Give us a desire. Lord, fill us like rivers with living water. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit, God. We want more of you. And Lord, if we, if we, it's the first time we just want to be baptized in your Holy Spirit, Lord. We, we just want to experience all that you have for us. So Lord, bless your people. As they go today, watch over them, protect them, uh, Lord, along the road and, and where they lie down when they wake up. Lord, bless them, encourage them. Lord, give them divine appointments this week that they can reach out and touch somebody for Jesus. And Lord, bring them back here healthy and safety on, safely on Wednesday. And we ask these things in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. And all God's children said, amen and amen. These altars are open. If you want to come, come on down. Hallelujah. Thank amen. you, Jesus.